Well, you probably clicked on this video because you want to know how to make your own Roblox game. And I get it. You're a young noob and you're trying to learn to make your first Roblox game. You search up countless and countless of material, try to learn scripting, try to learn everything, but you just can't seem to get it through. You can't go ahead and make your own game. Well, Welcome to the beginner's tutorial where I will be showing you everything you need to know in studio and this will be a series that I'll be recording on my channel so make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you do not miss these videos because I'm going to be teaching you how to make a game as a complete beginner and how to basically release it and get everything down and in this video we're going to be going over studio basics, what scripts are, what they do and how you can start up your own game. Now, if you guys wanna do fast track your process and you wanna learn much quicker and you wanna learn a lot more material and you just wanna get access to everything, make sure you check out the first link in the description is gonna be my academy. That is where I basically teach people everything I know, not just scripting, but it can be anything. And we literally had some crazy student wins recently in their games. Like it's been it's been insane. But yeah, if you are interested in that, make sure you check out the first link in the description. That is my academy where I teach people personally. Without further ado, let's get straight to the video. Now, this is Roblox Studio, and you guys might not have a clue on what things are you might guys might know what some of these things are but i might be going over some basics and interface and just stuff you need to know on where things are so this is the most important part one of the most important parts which is the explorer and the properties this is where you're gonna be modifying most of your things and explorer is basically all the locations of stuff you have in the game so as you can see this is the spawn location this is where our players will spawn at you can move this with your cursor and you can drag it around and this when you go ahead and press play up here which is located in this home tab you're gonna be spawned there right base plate is basically this whole gray block where you have your terrain and as you can see, we have a bunch of things. So workspace is everything you see visually, right? Everything you see on here. So uh, the camera, the terrain, everything is in workspace, right? Players, this is when you play the game where all of the players will be. Lighting is basically all of these things right here that you see. So the sky, the sun, uh, etc. And you can go ahead and open this up with this little arrow right here. And you can go ahead and modify stuff in the property. So if you guys see... In the properties by the way if you don't have properties like listed here it'll be in the view tab you can go ahead and go to the view tab and click this and you can open up all of these which will help you uh, so as you can see i can open up toolbox right here and it's gonna pop it right here and i just basically have it all set up like this but we're gonna go to properties which is right here let's just go back to home and as you can see you can change stuff up like this you can change the atmosphere density which like increases the fog you can change it down you can go ahead and change the sky you can go ahead and change like the bloom that you can like put 25 to make it more bloomy you can put one um and you can go to depth of field too and you can also have a, like a depth of field effect you can have like sun rays so you can make sure when you the sun you can have like intensity too okay this is a bit too bright oh my goodness but as you know you can change up all of these properties and each one of these has their own property which you can change so basically what properties are is their values which you can change so as you can see it has like stuff you can play around with to basically get the best lighting and sky for your game and you can also uh, go ahead if you see here you can go ahead and press plus right here and it will open you up a lot of things now the things that are grayed out are things that you uh, can add uh, into here and also some of these things you also can't add but some things you can add as you can see uh, sky atmosphere sun rays color correction bloom blur now for example let's say i add this this doesn't function in here because it's not tied to lighting it's it's something uh, related to path lighting, right so you can't be using that inside of lighting right so you gotta make sure you use these base ones are fine if you want to add some more you can add them but basically these base ones are going to be what's best for you and we covered over properties there material service we're not really going to be using this too much but it's basically for all the materials in the game what textures they have replicated first and replicated storage are basically where we're going to be storing stuff that the player can't see so if i want to store let's say the spawn location into here if i go ahead and uh, right click and copy this and paste it into replicated storage this is going to be stored inside of here and basically no one can see it but through scripts i can go ahead and access it right so that is what replicated storage is for 
server script service is basically where all of your server scripts are and i'm going to be going over what server is and what the client is uh to basically give you a good understanding of what each thing is so this is where all of these type of scripts are these white scripts so if you don't know what a server script is it's this color of a script and that's basically all the scripts that you can see on the server right so server storage next up is uh say similar to replicated storage uh just that it can be accessed only from the server uh it is uh, also just the same usage as this uh completely and then you have starter gui which is where all of your uh, user interface will be when we make that later down the line starter pack is where all the tools will be so if you guys know um when you have like a sword tool in the game that's where all these tools are whenever you place a tool in here you get it in game and then you have starter player which is basically these uh blue scripts go into here these local scripts what they're called and this is where uh you initiate code from the client and we're going to be going over client and server relationship in this video so don't worry but basically these blue scripts go into these two and i'm going to be telling you what each scenario and why stuff goes into here but basically the main thing you need to know is that these white scripts go into here and these blue scripts go into here right teams is you know on the side if you have a red team and a blue team uh, sound services where you can play your sounds and these ones we're not really going to be using so you can ignore these and that's basically the main layout of the explorer now as i told you guys um you can use properties right here to change up stuff what we can do now is if you go to home, we can add a part right here. Uh, if we click this, it's going to add it to the workspace. Now, if you remember, workspace is where you see all of your visuals inside the game, stuff that you can't see with your eye. And if you go to properties, we can change a lot of stuff, right? We can change the brick color. If you guys check, we can change the color of these parts uh, to be, let's say we can make blue. Boom. Now our part is blue. You can do the same thing with the uh, spawn location. You can put it to red. You can do a bunch of stuff right here, right? You can change the material so i can change it to neon so it can like glow i can change it to plaster so it's like i don't know plaster you can change the transparency which makes it so okay this is like kind of like ghost part this is invisible fully and then this is fully visible right um these ones we're not really going to worry about right now size you can change the size this is a vector three property that's what it's called and it's basically uh, length uh, height and width right so i can go ahead and change this to 10 10 and 10 and as you can see now it will be a perfect um square uh, and we can go ahead and change the c frame right here what c frame is it's basically the location of this part inside of the workspace so if i go ahead and change this to 15 as you can see it will move a little bit if i change this to 55 it will move all the way there and as you can see when i drag it it changes the c frame and c frame is basically where it currently is from zero zero which is kind of like a center point inside of your uh game and then we have a bunch of other things we have can collide which basically makes it so if this is off we can pass through this um with our player if it's on we're gonna collide with it can't touch it's basically used for scripts anchored basically what anchored is is if i go ahead and move this as you can see we have the home we have a bunch of things right here if i go and press the move tool if i move this and then it's anchored uh if i uh if i have it anchored it won't drop down but if i have it anchored it will have physics so it'll basically drop down so what anchored is is basically making the part stuck right um now we have a bunch of other things right here that you can play around with but those are basically the main things now for quick access you can also go ahead and scale stuff up here you can also rotate uh your part up here with these um and then you can also spawn more parts in and uh, the main important thing is that when you press play right here as you can see you are going to be playing your own game which is inside of studio right now for the other stuff not really anything you need to dive into right now maybe in the other tutorials in this series we're going to be going and diving deeper into these but the main things that you need to know is the home tab now in the model tab it just has a little bit of extra features that you can use such as like color material and then you have the avatar tab which we're going to be going over later test tab where you can go ahead and test with two players so you can press this and it'll open up two windows of roblox studio and you'll be able to test yourself now a quick thing i always do is i turn this device thing on uh, which basically uh, allows you to change um you know 
on what device you'll be playing at. So if I put iPhone 14 Pro, I'll be kind of playing like on the 14, even though I'm on the computer. Uh, or if I change this to HD uh, 1080, this is gonna be where the computer players are. Uh, so you can test like, you know, if you wanna test your game on your phone and you don't wanna pull up your phone, you can just do this, which is pretty, pretty cool, right? Um, view, as I told you, you can go ahead and select these. Now you can use my settings, basically. I have the Explorer on the right side. I have the properties on the left. Asset Manager, Toolbox, Output, Command bar is all the way down here uh, and find and replace all. All of those are on the left side right here. As you can see, I have them uh, lined up right here. Output is basically where all of the scripting output will be shown when we run the game, but we're not going to be going over that too much, right? So what I wanted to show you guys is um, how we can go ahead and modify these properties. If you guys see uh, when we change the color and stuff, it's pretty simple. We're going to do it through scripts and then I'm going to show you what blue scripts are and what these server scripts aka white scripts are um i'm gonna call them blue and white just for you guys to know because a lot of you guys are beginners and don't refer to these server scripts local scripts so to make it easier to remember we're gonna be going over like that right so very simple things that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this white server script right here and i'm gonna be going ahead and uh uh putting in local part which we're gonna be referencing this right equals to workspace now, what we're doing right here is we're basically grabbing this workspace, uh, as you can see, and we're going to press dot and we're going to say uh, part boom right here. So that is going to reference this part right here. But the thing with studio is it sometimes won't load. So this might run before this part is even generated because when we press play, all of these generate again. So to change this, we're going to do a simple wait for child part. And I'm going to be going over what children are and what parents are. Uh, because that's how Roblox refers to certain instances. But for now, just know that this is just basically going to wait for this part to spawn. And once we go into here, we can go and press part. And as you can see on the right side, we have a bunch of things we can play around with, right? So to make sure uh, we uh, change the color, let's say we can go ahead and press part dot brick color, right? So we're going to be going to here, getting this brick color. We're going to say equals to brick color dot new right so what this means is we're going to be creating a new color we're going to press two of these and we're going to let's say say okay we have um let's put bright red right so we uh, saw what the name is bright red as you can see you can select all of these right here we click it now what's going to happen is the part is right now blue if we go ahead and run this boom the part turned red so we basically modify the properties and you can do this for anything we can do the size size as I uh, told you, if you guys remember, size is usually uh, objectified as a vector three. So we're going to do vector three dot new. Same thing again. We're doing the dot new uh, for everything. And we're using the vector three, which is what the size is called. And we can put five, five and five uh, to basically change this size right here into five, five and five. As you can see, now it is smaller and you can basically do this for anything. We can also do this for transparency. So you can do part that transparency equals 2.5. So basically, this is only a number. We don't have to do a transparency that new. Um, uh, but if you go ahead and press play, boom, now the part is a bit transparent. So you can basically modify any single property. Uh, and what this server script uh, means is I'm going to show you right now. So if you go into here and we go into home, as you can see, uh, we have this current thing and it's called client. If I go to this called server, as you can see, both on the client and the server, this is the same, right? So the the size, the color and the transparency is the same on both the server and the client. Now, I'm going to show you, we're going to remove all of this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go into this script right here. I'm going to paste the same thing in. Now, as you can see, when I play the game, this thing is the same, right? So it is the same color, same transparency and same everything. But what happens when I go to the server? Whoa, what is this? Why is it blue and this big? And why is it not transparent? Even though we clearly wrote it here, because we are running this on our client. That means we're only going to see this change for ourselves, right? So what client scripts are used for is they're used for changes you want to make to only see to the local player. So not everyone in the server can see it, only the person will see only one person. So that is basically used for stuff like UI, right? So you want to have a button click right here and you want to make sure when you click that button, um, some uh, shop opens, right? So you're not going to be doing that through a server script because you don't want 
when everyone presses the button, everyone opens up the shop. You're going to be doing that only on these blue scripts. So when the player themselves presses it, only they will see the shop. So that is what the blue scripts were going to be used. And these white scripts, aka server scripts, are going to be the changes that apply to everyone uh, and everyone can see them. So as you can see, if we go into here again, everyone sees this change instead of just us being able to see. Now, uh, what the starter character scripts are, is it basically scripts gonna, it's gonna be the scripts that you use for your character. Um, stuff like, you know, um, it can be uh, pressing, like uh, doing like a running animation. So stuff that involves the character and starter player scripts is mainly for stuff like UI. So user interface, um, stuff that doesn't require the character, basically, right? So uh, that is all like of the rocket science you need to know towards the Roblox Studio and starting. Um, basically, as you can see, we have these white scripts or server scripts, which again, apply changes to everyone. And these blue scripts, local scripts that apply changes to only yourself. Now there's a other type of script called module scripts, but we're not going to be going through it in this video, maybe in the next one, since we're doing a series of this. So again, if you're not subscribed and you haven't turned notifications on, make sure to do that right now, because this is going to be a huge series where we're going to be making our game from scratch and doing this whole beginners thing uh, for you guys, because I know a lot of you guys have been requesting that. Uh, but basically, module scripts are a different type of script that isn't like same as these regular scripts and module scripts are mainly used for organization, um, which you guys don't need to worry about at the moment. But yeah, if you guys are interested in my academy and you want to learn more in depth about all of these stuff, you want to learn how to script, you want to learn how to model, you want to learn how to build, animate, whatever it is you might want to do, make sure to check out the first link in the description. That's where our academy is going to be and also do one-on-one -on -one teaching there. So it's going to help a lot of you guys fast track and speed up your process through Roblox development if you don't want to wait for these tutorials. These tutorials are good, but what I teach in the academy is very much in depth and is going to get you to start your own game or start earning money through commissions inside of Roblox. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe, turn notifications on, and make sure to like the video and comment down below your favorite part of this video or where you're currently at uh, in your journey. And I'm going to be going ahead and responding to a lot of your comments. So make sure to ask any questions you might need because I'm going to be responding to all of those in this video and stay tuned for the next video where we're going to be going over a bunch more stuff and a bunch of things that you need to know to start writing your first code and start making your own game. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Thank you guys. And I'll catch you boys in the next video. Peace.